here. Meanwhile, are you all excited about Sunday and the Super Bowl? I'm very excited too. And not to be a Debbie Downer, but there is a serious dark side to the big game, and that's our big conversation today. Authorities are in the process of rounding up 18 people who they say were offering package deals of cocaine and sex to wealthy out-of-towners here for the Super Bowl. It's just the latest effort to crack down on a crime that has long been in the shadows, but thanks to a number of crusaders, is finally coming to light. It happens nearly everywhere and every day of the year. Women and children, some as young as eight, are lured into the dark and dangerous world of sex trafficking, forced into prostitution. And authorities say when big sporting events like the Super Bowl draw big crowds of men, the demand for these victims skyrockets. But in recent years, so has awareness of the epidemic. Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey is one of the local leaders playing offense before the big game. The only standard that fits the crime of human trafficking is zero tolerance. And it must be vigorously and faithfully enforced by arrests of those engaged in this nefarious trade, modern day slavery. In both New York and New Jersey, law enforcement officials are working overtime and have already made at least 200 arrests in the last week alone for sex trafficking and related crimes in New York City. The New Jersey Trafficking Task Force is also teaching hotel workers, cab drivers, and airline attendants to recognize the warning signs of trafficking and to report them immediately. And activist groups are canvassing the area posting signs and releasing ads to get the word out, all in an effort to tackle traffickers head on. Please welcome Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey. Congressman, nice to see you. Thanks so much for coming. You know, it seems as if suddenly, Congressman, this is getting so much attention right now, right before the Super Bowl. But when did authorities first learn that a Super Bowl or an, a, a big sporting event like this can be a real hotbed for sex trafficking. We learned early on, but the reaction was very slow. And there was a, a culture of denial where people thought, well, that's not really happening. And frankly, what we do know is merely the tip of the iceberg. And we know whether it be in Olympic, Olympic Games. I remember I, 10 years ago, almost to the day, I was in Athens, uh, Greece with my wife, Marie. We went to shelters where women who had been trafficked, and we admonished the leaders there in, in Athens, in Greece, to be proactive and to prevent what was looking like a, 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 a magnet for human trafficking. Sure enough, they didn't do almost nothing. Yeah. Uh, and there was a 95% increase in trafficking victims as a result of putting your hands in your pocket and, and doing very little. There were a lot of arrests, too, made at the Super Bowl in Miami, yes. and that yes, seemed to make it bubble up oh, sure. to the surface, right? You, you know, the uh, Florida Commission uh, Against Human Trafficking said that tens of thousands of women and young girls were brought in uh, and were exploited as a direct result of that Super Bowl. If that wasn't a wake-up call, I don't know what is, but since then, there's been more of a proactive view taken by governors. My governor, Chris Christie, and, and working with the AG here in New York and the AG, of course, uh, in New Jersey, have a coordinated plan. They're working with Homeland Security in the states uh, to be absolutely proactive. Uh, so the key is prevention, if that can be done. And I guess it's not surprising anywhere you get a ton of people, men Especially primarily, yeah. out of town, you know, disposable income. And as I said, in such numbers, the people who are exploiting girls and women realize that they have a, a captive audience, if they sure you will. Do. And unfortunately, there's that sense of entitlement on the part of some men, uh, the further commodification of women, treating them as mere objects who can be exploited. Uh, I find it so disgusting that some of the advertisements, particularly on, on some of the social media, talks about Super Bowl specials, and they're offering young girls and young women, uh, and, and you know, they are trafficking victims, and they were being exploited in the most horrific of fashions. You know, you have been interested in this issue for a long time, and I'm curious, why, why did you get so involved in fighting this problem? Uh, Katie, I've been in Congress 34 years. I work very vigorously and still do on human rights issues around the globe, as well as when they're broken here in the U.S. When we saw after the breakup of the Soviet Union that there was all of a sudden 
a lot of the KGB types, East Bloc, went into organized crime. And they quickly realized that in addition to drugs, selling women, turning them into commodities, actually paid even more. And it coincided with the outbreak of, not the outbreak, but the, the use or the misuse of the internet. Uh, and demand kept going up and up and up. Uh, so in the mid-1990s, uh, I began to see this. I wrote the Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000, which is America's landmark law domestically and internationally to combat this terrible crime. But I'll never forget, my wife and I were in St. Petersburg, Russia. We met almost all day with women at one venue uh, who had all been trafficked. And I sat there, I don't cry easy. Um, I sat there and heard these women tell their stories of being sold over and over and over again. Uh, one woman had such a blank stare. Well, I brought them over to the United States, had them come and testify at a hearing. Uh, Miramed was the NGO in Moscow that arranged this for us. Uh, when they told their story, it was like the wake-up call. Congress, wake up. Um, at, uh, you know, some of the people, some of my colleagues were saying this is a solution in search of a problem. What are you talking about trafficking? Then when they heard these women, then we brought other victims forward. Uh, and, you know, it is my faith that drives me. Uh, I am a Christian. I'm a Catholic. And to me, it's all about, you know, helping the disenfranchised and the vulnerable. And nobody is more vulnerable than a woman who's been trafficked. And no. we should point out that very few women get involved in this uh, by choice. Oh, and they're so right. terrified to come forward forward and try to get help. They are. And, you know, frankly, uh, Katie, one of the things that traffickers do is that they tell the woman after they have abused her, raped her, after they have often gotten her on drugs, that if you go to the police, we'll go after your family, your extended family and friends, and we will either kill them or we'll, we'll, we'll get them involved in trafficking. One of the things I wrote into the Trafficking Victims Protection Act was a visa, at least for the internationals that are brought in. Uh, it's called the T-Visa. It gives them the ability not just to get asylum here, but also to help their families, bring them over so that they're out of harm's way. It's all about the retaliation. Uh, and again, the traffickers are so brutal. Uh, and very often in many places, especially overseas, the police are the Achilles heel of all that we try to do. Uh, you have a situation where if you go to the police, well, good luck. They're on, they're on the take. Thankfully, in the United States, there's been a vigorous effort to make sure that the police are the friend and advocate for these women. Well, it's and, wonderful, uh, the work that you're doing, by the way. And, and let's give uh, Congressman a round of, of applause. Uh, also, Brad Dennis is here. He's the founder of Blitz the Trafficker. And, and Brad, I know that you've helped crack down on sex trafficking at the past five mm -hmm. Super Bowls. So what does your organization do? How do you combat this? Well, the, it actually started by seeing very similar stories, uh, and it was stories that was coming out of Phoenix and not even associated to the Super Bowl. It was actually associated uh, to the BCS National Championship, where um, a pimp brought three runaway girls into the area for the purpose of prostitution. Um, being a missing children's organization, that obviously piqued our attention. So uh, we joined with Florida Coalition Against Human Trafficking, uh, which that's where it really kicked off. It was a, it was meant to be a grassroots movement. Let's just spread the awareness out there and, and inform people that maybe this would happen around an event. Uh, little did we know what we were really walking into um, until you walk into a Miami and you walk out there onto a South Beach and it is everywhere's it you know everywhere's you turn. Um, and so it has grown every year. Uh, we partnered uh, with uh, the National Association of Attorney Generals in Indianapolis when it became their big key that they were going to uh, put a charge to. And so we partnered there, and that was the first time that it went from a grassroots movement to a more state-sponsored movement. And do you feel like all this is having an impact? Um, <laughs> You know, there's so many statistics around this, and it's really hard to wrap your hands around some of these. Um, and some are just not true, and some are dead on. Uh, we have one stat that we believe in, and that's the number one. Uh, we believe that if we can inspire one to reach one, then we're going to save some lives. Uh, I can tell you a very quick story. It has grown to the point that we are even now into the schools. So just this week alone, 25 schools, six colleges, all were presented anti-human trafficking work. And uh, a survivor stood up in front of these high school students and told her story. At the end of that, a young 15-year-old boy now, a boy, came forward, came forward, went up to that survivor and said, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sorry. To me, 
that is so powerful. And that's the message that we're trying to get out there, that we as a community can make that change. And, and I feel like there's also been a sea change, Congressman, <clears throat> in the way we view this issue culturally or yes. as a society. It's been slow in coming, but it has happened. One of the things we wrote into the Trafficking Victims Protection Act was to treat the woman who has been picked up by police as a victim, not the perpetrator of the crime. And the actual definition of how do you violate the law? Well, if you recruit, transport, uh, or exploit, and that would include the Johns, but it, of course it includes, in a, with exclamation points, the pimps, you can go to prison for years, up to life imprisonment depending on the complicity and what you've done. Uh, that sends a message, sea change, right word, treat the woman as a victim or the trafficking boy or whoever it might be, and go after those who are abusing and exploiting. Well, Congressman Chris Smith and Brad Dennis, thanks to both of you for coming in and talking Thank to you. us about this important issue as well as the efforts that you're making. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you. Nice to meet you.